Out of many, one people is Jamaica's motto, which simply means that we may come from different ethnic backgrounds and have different belief systems, but together we are one. That concept should be no different from workplace inclusivity. I'm Khalila Reynolds, and it's time for another episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Joining me now to discuss how workplace diversity increases productivity, we have President of the Civil Service Association, O'Neill Grant. Hi, O'Neill. Welcome to the program. Hi, Khalilo. Pleasure to be here. And glad to have you. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about workplace diversity mm -hmm. in a context like Jamaica, mm -hmm. what are we really talking about? Well, in the Jamaican context, diversity really speaks about um, our social class or geographical locations, um, persons of diverse backgrounds and how you bring them into one common um, space, whether it's for work or for school or what have you. Um, the persons coming from diverse backgrounds and experiences lends itself to an, in, an enablement of internal culture of any organization. And so as a trade unionist, I promote and do think that the most productive workplaces are those that promote diversity. And for, for obvious reasons, um, if you want to examine it a little bit deeper, who does your staff look like mm -hmm. um, when the customers come into the organization who are they seeing are they seeing only females are they seeing a good mix of male and female are they seeing only young people are they seeing a diverse range of ages within the organization and that will appeal to the individual as it relates to how the organization operates and acts um, are we looking at how does the experience of individuals now create a dynam dynamic work um, environment where ideas are freely traded and these can now lead to improved processes um, if people are now thinking about how you want to market things young people have a different perception of how you market things middle-aged people have a different perception and so you now get a cross-fertilization of ideas as to how you deal with processes and how you deal with your presence outside. I'm, I'm glad you clarified what diversity means in mm -hmm. our context because we often hear about it in the American context mm -hmm. and it means they're a higher black person, a higher Asian person. That is not our, that's not our situation higher in Jamaica. Higher LGBT person that's and, not our situation. and you're diverse. We are, no, that's not our situation in Jamaica at all. Um, and when, if you look at the classic test, text around diversity, it speaks to those that you just mentioned, but for our experience diversity means more than that i mean we have always had for instance the challenge where persons will say that because i am from a particular um socioeconomic background i may have achieved and achieved a lot but people don't want to hire me because of where i i, I live or where right. i come from you, always, you often hear about complaints that people have to lie about their address their address on the application mm -hmm. otherwise they don't get hired when these people come into the workplace you find that they are one of they are some of the most hard working and productive employees that you have because of the general genuine need they have to succeed versus another set of persons who may not be as talented as those that are coming from that particular socioeconomic background and may not may feel a bit entitled in terms of where they are and may not be as productive as they should be. Um, so what, what happens is, is when you have the diverse workplace, it allows for the, the formation of culture where those who have a good and strong work ethic are able to influence others who may not have such a strong work ethic. And as a result of that, people learn from each other in that space and it becomes no part of the culture and the organization will benefit from that. Right. Mm -hmm. Having come from a diverse workplace mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. I, can un I can truly understand the mm -hmm. benefits of mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. when you have your staff meetings, mm -hmm. you have somebody from downtown, you mm -hmm. have somebody uptown, you mm -hmm. have somebody from country, mm -hmm. you have an older person, mm -hmm. a younger person, mm -hmm. and they can give you that di diverse opinions mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. together to make decisions. I can mm -hmm. see where that's very useful. Oh, definitely. And when you, when you talk about productivity, um, and again, it comes along with the whole thing of experience and where do you get your experience from. 
if you have, we used to have a thing back in the day that if you're not at least 35 years old, you can't get a job in a particular um, field. Um, you have to come with age experience. Mm -hmm. Now, employers are now looking for practical experience, and if that experience comes at a young age, mm -hmm. it is something that they want to leverage because that experience at a young age appeals to a particular demographic that they may want to appeal to whilst they would not want to let go of those who have come through the ranks and know the organization well and there are things that they can impart. So the new knowledge that young accomplished persons come into the organization with helps to sharpen the skills and to give a different perspective to those who have been there a long time who would say, you know, this is how we have always done it and, and, and might be resistant to change, whilst persons who are young may be more dynamic and will be accepting of change. And that culture, again, blends well with those who say, justify to me why we should change. Yeah. And those persons who are not able to articulate very well what that change should look like and then to bring that into the organization. Hence, you improve your processes, you bring new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things. You look at the target audience that you want to approach because of the type of processes that you're using, whether it's a service organization, manufacturing organization. Um, you're able to look at what drives the organization, what is the demographic you're appealing to. And that in of itself will allow for improve, improved productivity. And a good offshoot of improved productivity is increased staff engagement. If you have a diverse workplace and you engage them properly, then you are now creating for yourselves a gold mine mm -hmm. in terms of the staff that you have. And we have this thing that we say that young people don't stay long in organizations, but we never really go to look and, and see why. Mm -hmm. Young persons don't stay long. And a lot of times it has to do with the fact that we have never properly engaged them mm -hmm. and to allow them to express themselves in the workplace. So that's what I was just about to come to, actually. Mm -hmm. How do you make all your staff feel like they have a voice? Okay, so persons are driven by different things. Um, the older generation um, would be driven by matters to do with stability. The younger generation are now looking at, is this a cookie cutter job? Is there any room for creativity? Is there any room for me to apply my own personal orientations um, to this particular job that I'm in ask to do? Is there, is there a culture of active participation and feedback and those companies that allow for their younger staff to express themselves I, I think are those that oftentimes are on the cutting edge that many great ideas come from young people and that is oftentimes counterbalanced with those that have the experience now to, to interrogate those ideas and to say well yes based on what you are saying this can work but temper it with so and so and so so it, for me, it, it does help the organization when it, have, when it allows and fosters the creative minds of young people to, to, to be expressed in the workplace. Um, as somebody who have managed persons across various groups and backgrounds, what you get is strong cross-fertilization of thoughts as it relates to how the organization should be run. And if you ignore it, you ignore it to your peril. But how do you tap that creativity and those ideas at the macro level? Because you're in an organization, mm -hmm. they tend to, the board members tend to be the older people, the more mm -hmm. experienced people, mm -hmm. or the older members of staff. Uh, so how do you get that creative energy into your thinking at the decision-making level? It's not easy um, because organizations are in essence made up of people and people have biases and there is a natural bias against young people and a bias for older people and we tend to think that once you reach a particular age um, you are not a natural fit for the organization how do you tap into the young people's creativity again it comes it comes down to engagement um, what do young people like um, how does that you know allow the persons who are more mature to feel when we are now focusing on the things that young people like? Can we create a proper mix and a balance between the two? Are we um, allowing our younger persons to feel included and inclusive in the decision-making process of the organization? Do we ask them for their feedback when we're introducing new things? And I think that's how you tap into, into the diversity of the organization. And it's not necessarily just about age. Um, 
we are talking about gender. Mm -hmm. The workplace as we have it now tends to look a lot overbalanced as it relates to male versus female. Um, and it's a simple outcome of our educational um, our education outcomes. Um, the males tend to stay a shorter time in school than, than women. And so when certain types of jobs come around, they are the ones that are getting the jobs. So you, you now have to say, for those males that we have in the, in the organization, how do we keep them engaged? Um, no, we are now called the marginalized male. It's no longer that way around. Um, how do we keep them engaged? How do we create an atmosphere um, as well that also looks at the diversity of gender and whether or not the policies on, of the organization speaks to matters of harassment. Um, even though we may have more women in the organization, the power is still concentrated in a lot of instances in men. And issues of harassment continue to be very, very real. We had to pass legislation to deal with that. And it can, in fact, cause workplaces to be um, toxic if the diversity in the workplace is not dealt with properly in relation to the male female dynamic and That's how a great do, point. yeah and and if it is not properly dealt with it actually can impact the productivity in the workplace because we're talking about morale and if morale is poor and what influences that morale is not dealt with then persons will not be motivated to work and if we can't mo motivate people to work and produce then the organization will fail so how do we now look at the changing world of work, the dynamic of work, and see how it is that we can inject um, that diversity? And as I sp speak about the world of work, how we work is also now changing. Um, and COVID-19 has shown us that we don't necessarily need to have persons sitting in a brick and mortar space to be productive. How do we now look at the diversification of the way we work? as part of the diversity mix that we want to have in the organization. Um, do we allow persons to work from home and provide them the resources to work from home or to work remotely? Let me put it that way, not necessarily work from home, but to work remotely. Um, how do we deal with matters of telecommuting? Mm -hmm. And whether or not the persons who we employ are capable of working in a remote environment? These are some of the questions that, as a, as a modern um, labor relations practitioner, we have to grapple with now, with a new normal and a new way of where we work. So cameras on or off for staff meetings on Zoom? Well, that is, that is, that's another thing that we have to work with as well, yeah. because the, this is another uh, thing that we have to grapple with. Persons believe that, you know, once they're at home, they're at home. Mm -hmm. the, the, the thinking that we want to put into the minds of our employees our, and our members, if we are a trade union, is speaking on that side is that when you're at work, you're at work. Because when we ask the employer to treat you as if you are at work, we don't want you to behave as if you are not at work. So we ask persons to be professional, dress professional, carry themselves professionally, even if they're at home and they're in the time that has to do um, with work. You can't be at work and because you're a parent, um, expect to get a different treatment from the person who is single um, because you are both at work and once you're in that space, should be treated fairly and equally. Now, Another thing that speaks to how we manage diversity is do we treat everyone with, equi with equity? Am I being treated differently because of age? And it's not about discrimination, it's about discrimination. We do have age discrimination. Um, you treat young people different from you treat older people. You treat persons from a particular um, gender differently from you treat others. We still have a perception, when that's a perception, it's a reality of women being paid less for the jobs that men can do as well. And one of the things that we want to ensure is that there is equal pay for work of equal value. And that rewards diversity and causes, you know, cause the organization to be able to attract talent because you don't want to be able to, you don't want to be, to be said that, oh, your organization doesn't pay women well. If you're not a man, you don't get good pay. Right. Right. So you're able to, to attract talent because you are rewarding that diversity by compensating people fairly, have, have workplace um, policies that have a gender lens um, attached to it. So it's not just a male dominated type of policy that policies that you create in the organization, you create policies that both male and female can come and say, well, I think these policies cater to my gender. So, so it is a very, the diverse is a very um, diverse um, topic and it carries 
many facets to it. And if you, you start to drill down, it becomes a, a, a study on its own mm -hmm. um, in terms of how you identify issues of diversity. We here in Jamaica, I think our greatest problem has always been um, social diversity. Mm. Um, and it has been hampered by how people carry themselves, really. Um, we used to discriminate against persons because of their hair. Um, if you are a dreadlocks, still happens. Still happens. We don't look at the talent that a person has. Um, we look at persons you now, and this is a new phenomenon, relatively new phenomenon, that if you are someone who bleaches, um, you're not able to function in certain positions because of that part of a culture in a particular type of the part of the country that has you now manifested itself, that has marginalized a, a whole generation of people that if you are looking in a particular way, most employers are not going to want to employ you because you give or you, be, you have the potential to give their organization a negative image without being able to examine whether or not you can in fact contribute to the success of the organization. Um, a lot of it has to do with socialization and, and Jamaica still leans heavily on socialization in terms of how it treats with how we employ people. Um, and again, as we're talking about um, diversity, how we engage and retain people also can create a diversity bias. Mm -hmm. So you have certain sectors that mature persons don't see that as an area that they would want to go and work in. For instance, um, there's a particular perception about the business process of sourcing industry that it's, 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 it's a, it has a it's strong bias people. to young mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But there is a strong demonstration that it can in fact create a lifelong career for persons in a more mature um, category. Um, persons can actually build a career through, through the BPO. The challenge that the BPO sector has is one that it doesn't appear on the face of it to be a di diversified workplace. And it is something that the persons who are in that industry will have to really look at. Um, are we want to continuously give the impression that it's just young people that we want to employ? Um, do we give opportunities for persons to move throughout the ranks of the organization and be retained in the organization? Those are questions that ought to be um, answered by the persons in that industry. Again, the issue of precarious work right. dogs that industry because persons who want to have a stable employment will not see themselves as working in that industry because of the strong contract nature of doing the employment. They want contract to have nature and also salary has something to do with it. Well, so I hear that, well, based on what I've seen, that they pay, they pay they, for the risk of the employment, they pay fairly well. Some of them. Some of them. <laughs> Some of them, because if it's seen yes. as an entry-level job, then sometimes older people might not, might want, not want to, to go into it. Right. And, um, and those persons who are able to work remotely, actually sometimes for those it, um, companies that allow remote work, actually see it as an opportunity to earn additional income. And because I know a few people who do remote work for BPO. Um, but the challenge that they have, though, um, is that aspect of it that speaks to the precarious nature of the employment and how it negatively impacts the ability to diversify the workspace so they have this perceived bias of only catering to young people who don't have any responsibility. So mature persons like ourselves may not want to look at the BPO as a place that we want to, 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 to switch our, career, our careers mm -hmm. to. So, so, so those all, things can be looked at as well. All things to consider. A you made some great stuff. points, Anil. Thank you yeah. so much. Always a pleasure. Right. Always a pleasure. And here's a recap of Anil's key points. In the Jamaican context, workplace diversity speaks to bringing people from different social classes, geographical locations, ages, and genders into one common space. Integrating young people into the workplace can give you a different perspective. They're also quicker to accept change, which can be good for a company. Create policies that cater to both males and females to keep things balanced. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Visit their website at eximbankja.com and visit my website, kalilarunnels.com, for a summary of this episode. You can click the link in the description box below. I'm Kalila Runnels. Until next time.